I hope all of you are having a, a great time so far. Okay. My name is Linda Lay. I am a docent here at the Asian Art Museum. And um, what I want to talk about today are you've seen, you went on tour, you know, you've seen a lot of art objects and you've, you know, painted, you heard stories. Well, you probably um, have noticed that Chinese art all have some kind of auspicious meaning behind them. Ji xiang tu wan, right? So what I want to do is talk about some of the ones you've seen and some of the ones you haven't seen since we have a very large museum. And um, perhaps you can tell me later, how can you apply that to your curriculum? And uh, first of all, I would like to just show you some of the um, you know, designs that you're very familiar with. The kids love this, right? They see it as Nike. And what does it represent? Well, it represents fast, probably, victorious, and they must recognize this, correct? Well, these logos, the kids really recognize, or all of us recognize, without any written words. So it's a visual rep representation and immediately recognized by the, the public and in this country as well as all over the world. Chinese art is similar concept. Some of them can be recognized by majority of the population. If you see this hanging on your doorway during Chinese New Year, you probably know, it probably means something lucky about it, right? Even if you don't read Chinese. Well, if you do read Chinese, you know, fu dao le, blessings have arrived. But some other art, something like this, it may not be so easily recognizable by you know, the general population. In fact, that's why we call it hidden meanings, because the design has something hidden behind it to give you a lot of different meanings. And it probably takes an educated person or elite person of the society to interpret. We will come back to this image, but you are Chinese teachers, and the Chinese language is just so wonderful. It's so conducive to rebuses, you know, play on words, homonyms, and pictorial puns. So what we will do today is that we will look at some of these hidden meanings behind some of the traditional art. And then, if you can introduce to your kids, because kids, when they are learning Chinese, it's so much fun if they can have a little treasure hunt, right? To really discover and to decipher some of these hidden meanings and then make it relevant to their lives today. Our museum is really a treasure house for all of these activities. So let's, let me just show you what I mean. On your tour, you saw this piece of jade. It was carved during the Neolithic era. So what, five, 6,000 years ago. At the time, there wasn't any written language. So we don't know exactly what it meant. And also, you know, a longer piece like this. So, but they were found in the elite tomb. So they were something very important. Much later in literature, when we found in the historical books, you know, Chun Qiu Shi Ji, they told us that the shapes are very important. Round represented the heavens, and the square, the earth. So it's heaven and earth, tian yuan di fang. So you also saw a little bit later this um, money tree during the Han Dynasty, which about 2,000 years ago. And what's hanging on them? are Han Dynasty coins. If you see the coins right there, very different from the rest uh, or the other countries which has center round, but we have a square in the center and round on the outside. Another Tian Yuan Di Fang or round and square representing heaven and earth. And ever since we started a written language. You first saw it on the uh, oracle bones, the Jia Gu Wen, 
And then you saw this wonderful piece of bronze, which is one in the world, the only one. We are very proud to have this. Um, it's a little, little bit later in the Shang Dynasty. And by then, they have written words or inscribed words into the bronzes. And you saw it in the belly a little bit. You know, it was probably hard to see. But here it is. When I show the inside to my students, they always pick out one word. Who can tell me one word you can pick out? The king. Wang, probably, right? So what is the etymology of Wang, the king? Three horizontal strokes, heaven, humanity, and the earth, and a vertical stroke that connects all. So the king was a conduit between the heaven and earth. So that kind of gives you the same concept as that tong, that jade uh, square and circle, too. And um, one of my students told me, you know, the king had a lot of power in those days. I said, what do you mean? Well, look at Wang, the word. It has an X on the bottom. I, th I thought that was very good observation. You also, you know, the, um, Peter and Bob told you about the um, uh, Silk Road. During, especially during the Tang Dynasty, about 7th to the 10th century, there was a great deal of silk as well as ceramics Right? That was a very coveted um, uh, commodity. But the subsequent dynasty, the Song Dynasty, from about 10th to about the 13th century or so, that's when ceramic production was really at its zenith. And really beautiful pieces were made. And they were making things that are very high-fired, such as this pillow. It is very elegant because it really, you know, it's just white clay with a clear glaze on it. And it has a lotus leaf on top with a little boy, we think it's boy, holding underneath. It has a lot of hidden meanings. The curvature of that leaf fits directly right underneath the nape or the, your head. So if you sleep on a rolled you know, or wave type of a pillow, you know how important it is to have neck support. And that's exactly what it is. It actually can be kind of comfortable. I know that's kind of hard to imagine, but at least it will keep your hairdo intact. Um, so it was probably presented to a bride on her wedding night, a wish to have lots of descendants especially sons. Now, how do we know? Well, the son or the child is kicking one foot up. Who can tell me which foot? Left. Well, in Chinese, we say left represents male, right, female. Nan zuo nu yo, right? So, a wish to continue to have sons. What do you mean by continue? Because the word lian or that leaf is a lotus. It sounds just like the other word lian. So continues to have sons. This is another pillow, which has a very different purpose. It was for funerary um, purpose. And it has lots of symbolism on the designs. Well, first of all, it came from a kiln, Sujo kiln, which specialized in making this black and white, you know, place. But when you have a black border surrounding it, and then a light in the middle, it actually, for this purpose, it's a transition between the yin and the yang, okay, from the living to the underworld. And there is a deer in the middle, how do you pronounce deer in Chinese? Lu. Another word with the same pronunciation means high position in life, like fu lu shou, that lu. Okay. So again, a play on words, homonyms, you know, pictorial puns are used in all these hidden meanings. So this deer has one leg up. Which one is that? 
it's the right leg. In Korea, the right represents the military. The left represents the literary. So the left will be Wen, right will be Wu. So what does this mean? Whatever it says on this pillow, or it's painted on this pillow, it's not for the deceased. It's for the descendants of the deceased. So there's a wish. And there are five clouds coming around. Chinese, five is a very important number. Five means, in this case, five directions. You know the four cardinal directions, right? Dongnan Xibei. And then there's one in the middle. So that makes a five direction. So in this case, riches are coming from five directions. So what does this pillow tell you? It's the wish of the deceased family to have their descendants to prosper as a, a high position military person. So these two pillows, one for the living, and one for the dead. But both really send you similar messages, hopes and aspirations for future generations. You've noticed that I use the traditional writing. I know you teach um, Simplify, probably. But when I was starting to prepare for this um, PowerPoint, there's so few words actually are simplified in, in this talk. So that's why I've just remained it, um, I mean, kept it traditional, but I'm, I'm sure it's very easily transcribed to the um, simplified, but only a few words need to be done that way. Now we come to this wonderful piece of jade. It is a bat. Chinese love bats because when you say bat, bian fu, right, fu is another sound that sounds just like the blessings, fu. So we know it has blessings right here. But what are some other hidden meanings? There is a symbol that looks like a swastika. Well, this swastika symbol is not a German invention. It's a very old um, Buddhist symbol coming from India. So once it arrived in China, the Chinese interpreted it as being 10,000, one. So, one fu, ah, you know, 10,000 blessings. But there's one more. There is a ribbon. The bat is, has a ribbon going through. Ribbon or a sash in Chinese is pronounced dai. Dai can be a sash or another word pronounced dai means generations. So a wish to have blessings continue for 10,000 generations. Oh, here, one, I did change that one. Fu, a fu chuan wan dai. So that's, isn't that exciting if your students can decipher these little clues? Now this gourd, this bottle, has similar um, motifs. It has red bats flying all over the sky. And it also has a sash. But it can be interpreted slightly different. You see, all the hidden meanings, Chinese are really clever. There are layers of different meanings. So there could be more than one meaning to it. And when you're teaching your classes, depending on the age, you sometimes can vary the meaning depending on their level of you know, uh, uh, class, uh, what they can un understand. Well, in this case, red, hong, pronounced. Another word that means vast is also hong. And flying on, in the sky, which means hong fu qi tian, may your blessing be as vast as the sky. We're still on the bats. You often see um, five bats surrounding something. We call it Wu Fu, five blessings. So what is Wu Fu? You hear a lot. In Chinese, you know, really refer to a lot. Well, traditionally, the five blessings are health, 
wealth, longevity, love of virtue, and a peaceful death. So those are the five blessings, traditional blessings. And I often ask my students, what are your five blessings? You will get a lot of different answers. And you know, it's what's important in one's life. And it probably changes as they grow up as well. So these are jade carved panels. You know, Peter and Bob probably told you jade abrasion, you know, how to make the jade into these designs is really a, a quite a technology. And the five bats are surrounding one word, that's show, which means longevity. So this design, the meaning will be the five fu or five blessings surrounding longevity. May you be granted longevity and five blessings. How much do you want? My goodness, you have everything. And actually, the lattice in the back is also a swastika or a one kind of design. Now we come to this plate. We call it a birthday plate because it was probably given to a high official or even the emperor a, a, for, as a birthday gift. It has a lot of peaches. Peaches always symbolize longevity for some reason. And um, you, when you go to a Chinese restaurant, celebrate birthday, you often eat those peach-shaped buns, right? There are five peaches in the front, and it continues in the back, right there. Now I have to reverse it. Karen, I hope I know how to do this. Ah, okay. And the bats, we know there are five because two of them are on the back. So it really means may you possess both blessings and longevity. Actually, the eight peaches that has a, a significance as well. Eight, sometimes we will say ba eight kind of rhymes with fa to prosper. But in this case, actually it has another meaning because they are eight immortals. Guess what they do? They bestow longevity to people. So in this case, the eight actually represents the eight immortals to give you longevity and five blessings. So this is really a wonderful um, birthday gift. Now, when you saw this at the very top, Bob and P probably showed you that's Queen Mother of the West, an image. Oh, they told me this is funky. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, the Queen Mother of the West. What, do, what is their connection between Queen Mother of the West and the peaches? Aha, if you're teaching lower grades, you probably have told a Monkey King story. The Monkey King, what? You know, one of the episodes, he goes to Queen Mother of the West Peach Orchard and ate up all the peaches, right? Now, that's for the lower grades. I see one teacher nodding her head. So that's for the lower grades. But this image is a Taoist image, Queen Mother of the West, who presides over paradise and also dispenses elixir of immortality. Now, that concept sometimes gets to be a little, you know, hocus pocus for kids. But if they know that the peaches are, you know, really in the Queen Mother's West orchard, perhaps they can make the connection because those peaches or those, that orchard, the trees bloom and fruit every 3,000 years in the story. So 3,000 years is a really long time. That makes it longevity. Another um, design or motif that you see quite often is the, the head of this wand or a scepter. It is originally started as a magical mushroom or fungus called lingzhi. What did lingzhi do? Well, lingzhi cures a lot of ailment and it also gives you long life. So this shape and it curls like this became as you wish 
如意 It is a ruyi shape. We now often use it on a lot of different mediums, and we even use it on clothing. You might have seen this on your path on your way here because the collar and also that center and it's also a ruyi. And you may have heard that it's a yunzi tou. It's a cloud uh, pattern. Yes. We call that as well nowadays. You see, things do evolve over time, but you can push it back to the origin. Was originally the lingzhi, the mag magical fungus. Then it became ruyi, as you wish. And then sometimes now we call it cloud pattern because it resembles a cloud. Now this pillow, when I showed you, what sh what shape is it? It is a ruyi shape. So it's wishing. For something or another. Now I talk about fish. You often see this, especially around Chinese New Year, right? Fish. You eat it at Chinese New Year or New Year's Eve, and you save one for the next year because it, it symbolizes what? It sounds like abundance. Have extra. But in this case, we have this beautiful jar from the Ming Dynasty. It has fish, goldfish, swimming in a pond. Now, goldfish, pronounced 金鱼 also it sounds kind of like 金鱼 gold and jade. Now, the pond is pronounced what? 塘 right? 池塘 And if you put it all together and use a different word, just using you know play on these words, so what do we get? 金玉满堂 right? May your house be filled with riches. So if you place this wonderful pot with all these auspicious sayings in your house, that means you're going to have all this. You probably have told the story about that little carp swims upstream, jumps over the dragon's gate, and finally turns into a dragon. That that allegory comes up quite often because we always say if you work really hard, you know, overcome obstacles, then you finally will get your goal or get to your goal, and you became. Um, you become a dragon, and all of you have painted a dragon. I hope that was fun for you. And Susan told you, dragon is a composite animal, right? You, do you still remember some of? It's a snout of a camel,、um, ra rabbit eyes, big eyes, and it has a body of a serpent with fish scales and tail, and it has、um, ears of a cow and、uh, horns of a stag. And claws of an eagle. So all these composite make a very strong animal. So that's why all the emperors like that. Long, okay. And also next year is the year of the dragon. And what does it symbolize? It symbolizes diversity. When you are putting all the positive aspects of all people together, you make something very strong. A nation is very strong if you have diversity. And I often sh show this to my kids.、Um, you know, if you really work hard, like all parents always tell their kids, if you work hard, and that dragon skate is what, probably SAT or a college application. Once you get over that hurdle and you get into the college of your choice, guess what? You've made it. You've turned into a dragon. And in our collection, we have a wonderful piece of jade. You can see two fish on the bottom, and the body is still a fish, and it turns the head into a wonderful dragon with all those features. 鱼跳龙门 It doesn't have to be a carp; it can be any fish, right? Now we come to something really funny. Whenever I say a crab, our kids kind of roll their eyes. Well, actually, that's a really nice gift to receive, especially if you are a student. So the crab has a shell. The shell is an armor. What do we say? What do we call that armor in Chinese? 甲 
And another meaning for that jia means first, you take first in an examination. So if you give somebody a crab, before they take a test, what does it say? Yi jia, yi ming. May you take first place in the imperial examination in the old days. But now it can be any examination, right? So special meanings or hidden meanings sometimes also evolve. So this is not the only meaning to that. Now I've talked about jade, ceramics, you know, bronzes. Now I'm coming to paper and silk, calligraphy. Calligraphy is really the highest of Chinese, uh, highest form of Chinese art. And this particular fan, the uh, characters were written by Wen Zhengming, a very famous calligrapher and painter during the Ming Dynasty. And fans, for those of you who have been to south of the Yangtze River, Jiangnan, Suzhou, Hangzhou areas in the summer, you know what the heat's like, right? Well, all the gentlemen living in that area used to carry a fan. And they can decorate the fan with writings, or they can paint it, and they often exchange gifts, exchange fans as gifts. So what does that really mean? Well, of course, they're, they're nice gifts, but you see, fans pronounced shan, shans, and benevolence is also pronounced shan. So it's a reminder that, you know, to be benevolent and charitable as well. So this is really a civilized thought. I think that's wonderful. Now this painting, if I show it to, you know, kids, they look at it and say, oh yeah, old painting. It's darkened over age because it was painted on silk, silk darkens. And it has a whole bunch of flowers. But what's so important about this one, which actually is on view in our um, uh, gallery, painting gallery right now, it is during the summer of 1694. A famous painter, Wang Hui, he gathered up some of his colleagues, you know, a couple of students, but they gathered together to make a composite painting. And each one painted one plant or flower. Each plant or flower will have a meaning, which could be a metaphor for, for their character. And you've painted bamboo, right? Bamboo at um, the bottom right there. And what does bamboo mean? Still remember? Sherlyn told you. It grows upright. When the wind blows, it bends over, but it never breaks. It comes back. So it shows you what? Well, strength, yes, and also very upright character. And usually scholars like to compare themselves to bamboo. And there's a linger fungus right on the bottom as well. And then we have a plume, uh, plum flower. This is funky because it doesn't. Well, anyway, on the top is a plum branch or tree. Well, Chinese national flower is the plum flower, right? And, or mei hua. What does that represent? Well, mei hua actually grows even when the um, snow has not melted in, on the ground. In the very late winter, just right before spring, the flowers bloom. So, you know, it, it overcomes adversity and, and really ushers in the spring. And because it has five petals, and you know what that means. One thing very nice about a composite uh, painting is that's something you can do with your kids. I've always, you know, asked all the students, each bring something, you know, they like or that represents them into either a picture, it can be a poem, some kind of writing, and each brings something positive, and then what do they do? They create a beautiful painting as a result. So that's another um, project that could be very useful. And what do we call it when scholars or educated people, in the old days we always say scholars, scholars, but now everybody, especially your school, they're all educated. So are they are the educated uh, group. 
when the educated people get together, if they, your kids look at this painting, they probably say, oh yeah, old cronies getting together, which is true. Seven sages there together in a bamboo grove. But what do they do when they to get together? They call this gathering of scholars ya ji, or elegant gathering. And I always ask, what do the kids do these days when they hang out together? So you may get a lot of different answers coming from your students. This presentation is really just the tip of the iceberg. I've only mentioned very few motifs that have hidden meanings. But in our museum, we have world-class Chinese art. About 50% of the collection is Chinese. And I think it's wonderful if you can use this as resources. Even though these are traditional paintings, you can use them as inspiration. And then come with something new. You know, what are the new projects can come out of the inspiration? Next time you come, I hope you can give me some new projects. This particular image is my wish for all of you, all the staff and teachers at CASE. What does that mean? Oh, you should know this one. Okay, a sailboat, yifan feng shun, which literally means may, may the wind be around your back, but you can say it, may you be successful in all your endeavors, or just have a great school year. <laughs> 